Good morning. Welcome to worship at Tewksbury Congregational Church this July 10th, 2022. What a gorgeous day the Lord has given us. Please at this time take the uh, friendship pads which are in the insides of the aisle, complete them and send them on to your neighbor. Good way for us to get to know each other. Bible study continues on Wednesday nights from six to seven. We'd love to have you there. Once a month, on usually the second Tuesday, Thursday of every month, we serve at the Lowell Transitional Living Center. Um, we're in need of people to help. We do this once a month. We need four or five people. We need help. That means we're not getting four or five people to help. So it's an important thing we do. We do it once a month. We really need to be able to continue this ministry or we won't be able to. So we need your help, those of you out in the congregation, please help us. Um, Galilee Cafe will continue. A week from Tuesday, we'll be doing another barbecue from 5.30 to 7. All in the community are welcome and especially also our own community. So come on by and, and enjoy some barbecue with us. Prayer requests may be submitted now for those of you who are online, so please do so. And now we will continue in a spirit of worship. Thank you, Mike. And good morning, church. How are you doing? How did your last week go? Are you happy to be here this morning? Are you ready to worship God? Yes, sir. All right. Would you please stand for our call to worship? And we're going to do something different this morning. Uh, Robin's going to lead us uh, first, and then you're going to be asked to join at the very end. You'll see here the words to sanctuary, uh, just under, just right here. So uh, she will ask you to join at that point. But please stand, please stand. Let go of the demands of this day. Rest in the quiet of the sanctuary. There will always be needs to be met, demands on our time, but now is the time to rest. Help us to understand the resting time, that it is a time to be at peace and grow in God's love. Now let us pray. From the demands and pressures of this past week, we come, O oh Lord, seeking rest and renewal. Hear the cries of our hearts, our prayers, our needs. Heal and restore us, for we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please join me in singing hymn number 11, Stand Up and Bless the Lord.
And now would you join me as we say the prayer that Jesus taught the disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. May be seated. First reading today is from Deuteronomy 30, 9 to 14. And the Lord your God will make you abundantly prosperous in all your undertakings, in the fruit of your body, in the fruit of your livestock and in the fruit of your soil. For the Lord will again take delight in prospering you, just as he delighted in prospering your ancestors. When you obey the Lord your God by observing his commandments and decrees that are written in this book of the law, because you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Surely this commandment that I am commanding you today is not too hard for you, nor is it too far away. It is not in heaven that you should say, Who will go up to heaven for us and get it for us that we may hear it and observe it? Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, Who will cross to the other side of the sea for us and get it for us that we may hear it and observe it? No, the word is very near to you. It is in your mouth and in your heart for you to observe. This is the word of God for the people of God. Bye. 
Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> the scripture reading today is from Luke 10, 25 through 37. But first, the prayer of understanding. Patient, Lord, we schedule our lives down to the very second. We crowd in as much activity as we can and then wonder why we are so stressed out and tired. We are afraid to miss anything. And when it comes time to, with others, we spend our time worrying about details rather than longing for the visit. Forgive us when we get so caught up in the details and miss the opportunity, opportunity to sit at your feet, learning, listening, growing in our faith. Let us help place ourselves in your care. Slow us down just a bit so that we can see the wonders you have placed before us and generally enjoy and share the blessings you have given us. For we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Luke 10, 25 through 37. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and, whoops, excuse me, went away leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down the road, that same road, and when he saw him, passed him by the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed him by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put, them, put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii, gave it to the innkeeper, and said, take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? And he said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, Bob, and good morning once more. It's good to see you all here this morning. What a beautiful day, isn't it? What a great day to be here and worship God. Um, I like to talk a lot about roads. I, li I like roads. Uh, I'm so glad that they paved Main Street. Uh, it makes it easier to travel. I, I like that road even more now. But uh, a lot can happen on the road. Uh, I remember driving to and from seminary. It was a five and a half hour drive to and from. Crazy, right? A lot of time to think. A lot of time to think and I saw so many things and so many people and but it was a long drive and thankfully back then gas was a dollar sixty nine a gallon you know uh, going down the road uh, I'm that guy that will stop every once in a while and pick up somebody's junk yeah recently I picked up some plastic lawn chairs I'm, I'm seeing if I can revive them but they're kind of cracked and all that so guess where they're going in our dumpster I hate it. I tried to rescue him. Uh, one time, I got one of my favorite TVs. Guess where I got it from? Side of the road. I kid you not. I was driving home one day, and I saw this TV. It was a JVC. It was one of those uh, old square boxes. You remember those? Kind of heavy. This was back when people were going out and getting those flat screen TVs. So I went and got it. That thing lasted six months. <laughs> I was so happy. Uh, one time I found this really cool chair and I, and I actually took it and sanded it down and repainted it and uh, just loved that chair. More important than that, when we're going down the road, we see people from time to time, don't we? 
Just the other day, I was over in the area of Walmart, and you see people standing at the entrance, don't you? What do you think when you see them? Do you think there's something wrong with them? Do you think it's a scam? It's so easy to be scammed helping people these days, isn't it? It's very discouraging when you're trying to help somebody and churches give to help the community and you find out you've been scammed. And I've been scammed once or twice. So a lot of times you may see somebody on the side of the road and you're like, what is wrong with them? They did something wrong. I'm in a hurry anyway. I do not have time to help. Every time I go down there, I'm thinking, what should I do? <laughs> what should I do? A lot of churches have uh, kind of given up on that, and, and what they do is they give to organizations and missions and charities that help people such as that, that are in a uh, housing uh, insecurity phase of life. I remember one church and community where I, I pastored, they used this website called CharityTracker.com. And what you can do is you can go out, if you met people and helped them in the community, you can put their name down. Or if they scammed you, you could go out there and put their name in the database. So the church up the road could say, oh, this person reached out to me. Let me go check the database and see if they're worthy of that. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Some of you may think that's a good thing. Some of you are like, eh, that's kind of questionable. Changing a little bit here direction, do we have any Johnny Cash fans out there? I wanted to bring you back up, okay? You know, I'm not the biggest of country music fans, but Johnny Cash is Johnny Cash. He's his own genre of music, and, and, and early on in life, I, I remember my granny, she, she had a picture of Johnny Cash on the wall. It was like a pencil sketch, and I, I would look up, and it was kind of Johnny, kind of middle-aged Johnny. It wasn't young Johnny uh, before he left Arkansas. Uh, it, it was a middle-aged Johnny. And, and you know, uh, for those of us from the Deep South, a, a lot of people just look up to this man tremendously. His life, his, his example, overcoming hard times, uh, uh, his remakes of beautiful hymns. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Well, he could take a hymn out of our hymnal and just make it even more wonderful. Uh, but we all know he, he, he made some bad decisions, didn't he? Ending up in jail, illicit drugs, uh, uh, just a, a bad example. But he got his life straight. And, and, and along that journey, he heard about these guys in, in Folsom Prison. Have you heard a song about, about these inmates? Even much so, he cared about them. He went to the... He went to the prison in Sacramento, California, and he performed for him. His advisors and all those things, his record label, they didn't want him to go there. And guess what happened? People were amazed that he would do this. He did not forget them. He did not look the other way because there's something he knew. He knew of bad decisions in life. And, and guess what? You and I are one or two or three bad decisions away from being that person on the side of the road that may get judged. Would you agree with that? And here we are today. A lot can happen on the road. And, and here's Jesus. And, and how many of you uh, uh, get frustrated with this ordinary Jesus for reminding us of how we should live our life and love our neighbor? How many times have you opened God's Word and you're like, Ah, oh, Jesus, don't do this to me. Why, why, why are you teaching me this lesson? Uh, I don't have time for this. I, I, I see the world in a different way. And one day he was uh, out talking to the masses of people that wanted to hear what he was saying, and, and here comes a lawyer. Do we have any lawyers out here? I actually, you know, people pick on lawyers, but I, I have a lot of respect for lawyers because they will stand up for you when nobody else wants to stand up for you. They will. They will defend you. They will try to do their best to maybe get you off of a crime or a lesser crime or uh, defend you, and, and uh, that's not a bad thing. This lawyer back in Jesus' day was a master. They understood the law, the Torah, in the, in the First Testament. Uh, they also referred to as the Old Testament. And also they understood the oral traditions. 
And the Pharisees of that day, that sect of Judaism that Jesus was a part of, they had all kinds of traditions that maybe aren't written down in God's Word. So here you have this lawyer, this attorney that knew these things, and he wanted to challenge Jesus. And how many times was Jesus challenged with knowledge and his understanding of God's Word? All the time. Could you imagine that person that, uh, this has happened to me, you know, I, I kind of preach every Sunday. Uh, I've had people in churches that they question everything that I say. <laughs> everything that I say. And you just kind of get used to it. It's okay. I, I hope that people would question us and our, our Christian faith and the journey, the road that we're on from time to time. And I hope we share with them so they can learn from our experience. May I get an amen on that? What must I do to inherit eternal life? Good question. I love that word eternal. How many of you like that? You know, a lot of times we think of eternity as some far off distant place. But it's right here for those of us that serve the Lord. Isn't it? It's, it's right here. And uh, he, he asked them, you know, Jesus, how do I inherit eternal life? And he gives the answer, love, love God, love God with all that you got, and love your neighbor. And, <laughs> not or, but and, love your neighbor. How do we do that? How can we love all of our neighbors? I got a saying, we, we love people as Christians, but we may not like what they do. <laughs> Would you agree with that? So Jesus gave him the right and proper answer, and the attorney applauded him for that. That is excellent, right? But like Jesus, did he stop there? Nope. This is where the challenge comes in for the people of his day and the people of our time. He tells the story of the Good Samaritan. This is a beautiful story because there are people who do not practice faith in, in Christianity and they know about the Good Samaritan, don't they? They know about that. And many people, uh, both of followers of Christ and not, they have uh, picked up the gauntlet and they go out and they want to help their neighbor. What a blessing that is, to love your neighbor and to help. Did you hear Mike inviting you to participate in the transitional house in Lowell, just up the road. And did you hear that plea, looking for more volunteers? <laughs> I seem to remember uh, Jesus saying last week, when he sent out the 70, that pray for the harvesters. Because there's not a lot of them. And here we are today, churches, communities seeking people to serve and to help and love their neighbors. So he goes into this story, you've heard it many times, and I'm going, this is a reminder today, people. This is a reminder, you have heard this. It's like when you're reminded on Christmas Eve and Easter. <laughs> this is, this is a, an important reminder to get up out of the pews, get off out of our couches, for those of you on the cloud watching, and to love your neighbor. If there's one thing I know about our younger generations, they're, they're not much on sitting around and talking about it. I love to sit around and talk about theology with other people. It's great, but, but they, they're doers of the word. They're, they're like the, 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 the epistle of James. And James is a very challenging individual. And guess what? I think there's a Bible com study coming up about James, right? And we'll all be challenged once more, especially for those of you that participate. So he tells a story, and there's a, a beaten man on the side of the road. Bloody, left for dead. He, he was dying. And then three people passed by. A priest and a Le Levite. Let me stop there. Do you think that priest of that time knew God's holy word? <laughs> I would hope so. I would hope so. But what did he do? Oh, that's terrible. I'm in a hurry though. <laughs> You know, there's some scholars out there that think that this priest did not want to touch the man because it would make him ritually unclean as well to touch, you know, the, the blood on his body to help him. 
that's not what I adhere to. I, I just believe he, he just didn't want to deal with it, that he didn't have time, so he went on. I wonder where he went. And I wonder what words he shared with us. And then there was the Levite. This was the priestly tribe. They're supposed to know their stuff, right? They would teach the other tribes about God's word. But what happened? Went on by. Don't have time for this. And here comes the Samaritan. Now, before the Jews returned to the promised land, when they were in bondage just the years before Jesus, the Samaritans were left. These were basically, these were people of Jewish heritage that they were left, and, and sometimes they would marry people that were not Jewish, and some scholars call them half-breeds. And what a horrible word that is. What a horrible phrase, isn't it? So when the Jews came back from captivity, that second time in their history, there were the Samaritans, and guess what? They did not like them. They were not loved like they loved their fellow Pharisee or Sadducee or whatever sect. How many of us have all these boundaries and restrictions on our love? One, two, three, four, five, six. If people meet this, they climb up the ladder and then they, they get to that great zone, don't they? I love you now. <laughs> I love you now. Thank you for doing all those things for me. Thank you for meeting my criteria. How many of you that learned a trade or went to college, how many of you just got frustrated that I have to do all these prerequisites to get to what I'm going to major in? I did not like them. My grades reflected it. <laughs> but then I made it, I climbed up the ladder, and I got to what I wanted to learn. Praise be to God. You know, prerequisites are frustrating for people, especially when there are boundaries to how we love our neighbor. Are you mad at me yet? Got one or two, right? I may have a few myself that I need to repent of today. But anyway, uh, Jesus challenging people smashes all these boundaries because he lifts up the Samaritan person to prove that once and for all, who is our neighbor, and who are we called to love? Everybody. Especially our enemies. Now, wait a minute, Jesus. Our enemies are bad. I do not like them. You know, I'm, I'm bringing up more and more uh, in this divided country that we live in. A lot of people having a hard time loving their neighbor that disagrees with them. This past week, I was told that I was part of the evil movement. <laughs> yeah, because I did not agree with the theology of the person that I was talking to. And this has been a friend of mine for 20 years. And guess what? I felt judged. Ever felt judged? It's hard. I felt like he was just kind of leaving me on the side of the road. <laughs> And I tell this to you to not make you feel uncomfortable, but, you know, we can respond in grace and love, can't we? When people disagree with us. And it's amazing. Sometimes people that God sends and places in our life, uh, we would have never imagined them helping. I imagine the audience listening to Jesus, they're like, are you kidding me? This Samaritan can't help anybody. They're not like us. But yet the Samaritan goes over to the ditch, helps the man that was bloody and left for dead, picks him up, gives him medicine, gives him a ride to an inn, provides for him to stay there until he gets strong enough to go home or wherever. And then he tells the innkeeper, if he has to stay a little bit longer, just let me know, I'll come and pay his tab. Isn't that wonderful? not to look the other way and to rescue a person. Oh my gosh, I, when I think of the people that step up and, and help people with mental illness, or maybe, they were, maybe they're recovering from abuse or drug addiction, and these are special people to me because that is a call that God gives you to help and lift people up and, and, and help them be reconciled and, and restored to humanity. I remember doing prison ministry, meeting the men in there, 
uh, in this case in the chapel, where their chaplain and, and others that went into the prison almost every day were there to lift them up. Regardless if they were getting out tomorrow or they were never getting out, they would go in and lift them up because they did not look the other way. Matthew 25, beginning with verse 31 through 46, kind of pops into my head right now. Read it on your own time, but just like this passage, uh, Jesus challenges us to consider who our neighbor is. Because when we see somebody as ourself, who do we see in them? Jesus Christ, our Lord. That is who we see. You know, uh, in ministry, we have challenge, challenges, don't we, church? You know, we learned last week that sometimes we will be rejected in what we share with people. I remember a church that I led. I, when I got there, I, I met a gentleman in the congregation that he led a small group that met late in the night during the week that was there to help men that had been abused as they were growing up. One night, they didn't have this meeting, and a young college student showed up to get support. They weren't there, but there was a group meeting at the church, and they invited them in to eat. And, and, and as a sign of healing, people will openly share what they're going through, even with strangers. And he shared that, and it made them feel uncomfortable. Within two weeks, the trustees of that church voted for that group not to meet anymore. My heart was broken. That is the opposite of what we do as a church, don't we? We do everything to love our neighbor, supporting directly or through a charity, a mission, giving our donations. I was so proud of our church when, when we, uh, we saw the, the, the tornadoes that ravaged us over in, in Kentucky and I had several of you call and say, we want to help. And we, we raised that money to help our neighbor over there. And that house is completed. We will share the pictures with you soon. Uh, it is completed. The house has been dedicated. It has a brand spanking new roof on it. The, the side of the house has been repaired. And they even had extra of God's abundance to build a deck on front of the house. <laughs> Praise be to God. Isn't that the way it should be? Everywhere and always to respond to the needs of the community. But again, our church, I know it's here in Tewksbury. I know it's in Middlesex County. I know it's in Massachusetts. But who is our neighbor? Everybody in every other state, every other country, every other community around the world. Blue and red states are neighbors, aren't they? Like it or not, they are. Kentucky is a red state. And we're a church in a blue state that helps somebody in a red state. How dare we? That's how the kingdom of God works, isn't it? Jesus says there's, there's no boundaries to loving our neighbor. This, this despised Samaritan stepped up. He answered the call. He did not look the other way. And I hope that we would not do that. I hope that no church would do that. I hope that no individual out in our community, for whatever they believe or whatever they practice, will look the other way as they're driving down the road. You know, uh, Johnny Cash went into that prison in Folsom County in Sacramento, California, and he sang some good news. I think that modern phrase is, he lit up the place. He went in there. Could you imagine the, the inmates, the love they felt as they sang along? This, this man of stature would come in and say, Hey, I have not looked the other way. I can kind of relate to you. I've had some troubles in my life. Let us never turn away from our neighbors as we journey down the road. Let us always see them as love. Let us see them as we see ourselves. Sometimes we may need help from time to time, right? And I hope that we see Jesus in every person, even our enemies. Praise be to God.
for this challenge here today. How many of you are going to go home and listen to some Johnny Cash music? <laughs> May I recommend Ring of Fire? <laughs> or I've been everywhere, man. Johnny Cash went everywhere along the road. <laughs> As you go everywhere, just know that your neighbors are everywhere. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand and join me in singing hymn 594, We Are Your People. see Susanna and Isaiah are going to lead us in our time of prayer. We had some technical difficulties on Facebook, so I don't have any of the Facebook messages, so I apologize to those out there watching. We weren't able to do that. But we continue to pray for the people of Ukraine, and we pray for those involved in the 4th of July shooting in Hyde Park, Illinois, as well. Are there any prayer requests here in the sanctuary? Yes, Kathy. I have two concerns or prayers and desires. Last week I had prayers with you with Jennifer's granddaughter's family and his mother passed away. And I just like to um, ask for more peace as they lay in the two rest later today. So Kathy's daughter Jennifer and her her boyfriend's mother passed away and they're laying her to rest. So just prayers for peace for that family and continued prayers for them as they move forward. So prayers for a college friend of Kathy's who has stage four melanoma with lesions on the brain. So praying for that person and, excuse me? So Becky, yes, we pray for her. Any other prayers? Let us be in a spirit of prayer. God. 
God, we thank you for this beautiful New England, Massachusetts day to worship you. Thank you for the beauty of your creation that surrounds us. Thank you for calling us here to center our lives upon you once more as we worship you in the grace that you give us all. Thank you so much for all that we pray for this day. So much going on around us, oh God. So much to pray for. Yet we know that you're present in everything. You work through people. You work through us to make a difference. When people need to feel love and grace, when people need to be helped, like that man left in the ditch on the side of the road, like the Samaritan called to be there for their neighbors, help us do the same, oh God. Thank you for all that we pray for this day, for those people going through a hard time, for people we know from various stages of life, here and there and everywhere. We pray for them and we lift them up to you, thanking you for your healing, love, and grace. Again, oh God, so much going on with wars and strife and disagreements and battles. You know, God, help us to be a, a beacon of peace in our world. Help us to share your love and grace. Again, to be there and love our neighbors that feel forgotten, that feel left, that, that are hurting this day. Thank you, O oh God, again for this day and all that we pray for. And we also pray that we follow you in all that we do, guided by your Spirit. Not to do what we want to do, but to do your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite our deacons to come forward as we receive our offering. Please join me in hymn number 688, We Give Thee But Thine Own.
How many of you are ready to go to the front lawn and have a few refreshments? <laughs> How many of you are ready to continue to celebrate this beautiful day God has given us, reminding us of the beauty of creation? Uh, how many of you are ready to go forth down that road and share law, uh, Lord, the, the Lord's love and grace with all? Amen. Let us do that in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.